The president says alcohol is the number one problem. Your education. Hey, somebody better tell Clinton because uh, his splashy new anti campaign never mentions alcohol. Sally Wigan joins us today to talk about me and everything and to take your questions. She's from so soon. Actually, I can be so soon. So, two for today on Cullen on Cable. Welcome to Cullen on Cable. Uh, that's a really strong statement that the uh, president of Penn State made in the wake of that appalling spectacle this weekend at State College. More damage done than done by hordes of long-haired, pot-smoking, anti-war demonstrators during the Vietnam era. And now we have these clean-cut children of the Reagan era drinking booze, which of course is legal and generally preferred, I suppose, by parents to anything that might like reek of something growing out of the ground. And you've got the president of Penn State saying it's the number one problem facing higher education today. He made clear Penn State does not stand alone here. It's interesting because last week saw what? The president unveiled this splashy new anti-drug campaign. The frying pan came back out and only one up to, you know, instead of just an egg in a frying pan, now we've got some deranged girl trashing an entire kitchen. Not making the point, again, I can assure you, or over making the point, and thus not making the point. Kids who this is aimed at, watching that spot where when it was just an egg in a frying pan, used to laugh at it. Now they're going to howl at it. And interestingly enough, all of those ads, all of your tax dollars going for yet more nonsense that doesn't work in the ridiculously inept war on drugs, not once is alcohol mentioned. And yet here we have the president of a major institution of higher education saying it, not pot, not heroin, not crack, not cocaine, is the number one problem facing higher education. But you see, the feds make a lot of money on alcohol, you know, they get a lot of tax dollars, revenue, revenue from it. And in fact, the feds and everybody else, there's a whole cottage industry based around the criminalization of marijuana. So. The hands here are not clean when it comes to why our government targets some drugs and not others. The worst one of all, of course, the legal one. We can make this point till we're blue in the face, not that it does any good. Well, Sally Wing is going to be by rather soon. Uh, she's already here, but we're not letting her in yet. And when she comes, she's a lot of fun. We're going to talk about anything and everything. I guess I already said that, so don't repeat myself. So last night anyway, uh, while Sally Wigan is holding down the fort at her station, we won't mention any call letters. Well, that's not very nice over at Channel 4. I guess I still didn't mention any call letters. Um, I'm watching, dutifully, Channel 11 here. And what do I see but David Johnson, of, happens to be a friend of mine, David Johnson on the scene on Mount Washington. Now you have heard that they have instituted a one hour parking rule up at the Overlooks and on Grandview Avenue. So this puts a bit of a crimp in the evening plans of a lot of young Pittsburgh kids who hang out at those overlooks or lookouts. But you have to believe that if Pittsburgh's going to pawn itself off as a destination city and as a tourist attraction, which is what we keep trying to do, although seems a little strange to me too, if there's one place that a tourist would want to go, it's up there to Mount Washington to look over this spectacular and startling view, perhaps one of maybe the most startling view in urban America. And so if a tourist from anywhere comes up there, what do they see? 
a bunch of Pittsburgh uh, kids hanging around smoking cigarettes and uh, and generally sort of upsetting the ambiance. So it doesn't quite make it as a tourist attraction. So anyway, check out this story with David Johnson. There's a few things I sort of wanted to point out. We call this back talk because, well, that's what I do when I'm watching TV. I talk back. Police beat officers now now enforce the new one-hour parking restriction, marking down times, and later returning to write tickets. Residents along Grandview have long complained of excessive noise. Hello, why are you looking at me? From car stereos. Are you looking at And about here? loitering as well. The new one-hour parking rule is the latest effort to curb all that. They're never going to stop it. People are just going to keep coming up. It's nothing they can do about it. Okay, okay, okay. Now, I... there, there you are. Now, if you were a tourist who have heard that Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania is an incredible city and the place to see it is on Grandview Avenue looking over this glorious point and you come up to see it and instead you encounter a local resident. Look at this. They're never going to stop it. People are just going to keep coming up. It's nothing they can do about it. No. You know what I mean? Place to There's nothing they can do about it, you know what I mean? Well, I got news for this guy. There is something they can do about it. They're starting to do something about it. And I, look at that attitude. Anyway, hey, were you up at State College this weekend? Yeah, they had some fun up there. It was even more fun than what you're talking about. Well, that's all. It's a hangout spot Wait, for all of us. Guy some of them are real loud. All right, Philomena here. And we'll get a lot by of her. noise. She, she's got to live with the kids. Motorcycles. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Five, six, seven, eight, Look, there's a young girl smoking, I'll tell you. It's an outrage. Oh, here's the guy. Here's another one. Listen. Pittsburgh's finest. Here we go. It sucks. Because uh, they kick us out in an hour. We ain't got nothing else to do. It sucks. They kick us out in an hour and we ain't got nothing else to do. He's an attractive young man. I bet there's even a brain in that head. I got... I have a suggestion for you, Charles. Here's something else you can do. Take English lessons. Read a book. Jeez. All right, that's all I have to say. Anybody have a problem, by the way, with... Um, anybody have a problem? Hello? Anybody have a problem with... You agree with the kids, by any chance, that they have every right to stand there and stare at the beautiful golden triangle as long as they darn well please? Is this, uh, you know, is this an anti-kid? Poor kids, they got nowhere to go. They got nothing to do. I mean, if there's not a riot at State College, what are you supposed to do? If you can't overindulge, drink beer, and uh, kill yourself with, uh, with tobacco? I mean, we ain't got nothing to do. It sucks. I'll tell you, this guy is really articulate. Might have a career in television. Just keep it up, Charles. Nicole, how you doing? Hello. Nicole? Hello. Hello. I just wanted to say that there's millions of people out there that are drinking too much alcohol and dying, or using cocaine and dying, and no one ever really looks at the people who just use marijuana. Everyone says it's a gateway drug, it goes into something else. All these people are dying and killing each other and killing themselves, and the struggle on more includes marijuana. I think that people should take a closer look at what it really does to you. What does it really do to you? It doesn't. It doesn't make you angry. It doesn't make you go out and rob. These people drink. What does it do to you? It just relaxes you. It helps with pain. It helps you sleep. It helps you with your appetite. Um, you know, it's recreation, and there's no harm in it. And I think anything, you're right that the government makes money on the alcohol. They should make that illegal instead. And nobody ever says anything about that. Well, I don't, I wouldn't, um... I wouldn't make alcohol illegal, but I also wouldn't make marijuana illegal. As you let people decide for themselves, obviously of the two, alcohol is the more destructive. I wouldn't get out of, you know, you, you might like marijuana, and I understand that, but don't oversell the point. I mean, the fact is it's not totally good for you either, but right. between the two, right. well, uh, probably it's a, I mean, if you're going to do one or the other, probably marijuana is less. Right. Dangerous. Well, well, when yeah. you drink a when you drink, you can't drive a car. It's very addictive. Well, I, you shouldn't drive you know. a car and smoking pot either. <laughs> well, it's perception a, is altered. I well, know. it's a lot easier to do than when you're drunk. So, how often do you smoke pot, Nicole? Maybe once a week or so, once but it's uh, 
you know, it's not something that leads you into a drug lifestyle. Where do you get it? If it's illegal, is it easy to get? Um, you know, sometimes people have it and they'll just <laughs> offer it. And, just... You know? And how old are you? I'm just getting a, I'm trying to get a feel for like, how old are you? I'm 19. And when did you start smoking marijuana? Oh, um, probably the first time was when I was 16. 16? Mm -hmm. When did you start, when did you have your first drink? See, I drank when I was 14, and I drank a lot, and it was not good for me. And since then, I have never drank again. But you do smoke marijuana if you want a, Occasionally, a yeah. buzz or whatever. But I okay. never drink alcohol. Alcohol, I think, is a more addictive drug. I have people who are alcoholics in my family, and I don't want to take the risk okay. of becoming like them. Okay. Well, thanks for your call mm -hmm. and your honesty. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hi. Hello. This is Gary. Hello, Gary. Hello. Hello. Okay. How are you? I am fine. Thank you. Hey, uh, I have a question too on the uh, marijuana versus alcohol. Yeah. Okay. Um, I live in Butler, and the same thing is up here on Main Street. Uh, you got a lot of rowdy teenagers, and they're drinking alcohol. Right in this, right in, in downtown Butler, off side streets, mm -hmm. and they intimidate the older people. And when I was a kid, uh, I'm 40, when I was a kid, they had, I mean, there was a lot of pot smoking. And there was, there was none of this intimidation or rowdiness or violence. Uh, it was mellow. And the girl that called before, uh, before I did. Right, Nicole. Yeah, um, it does. Um, I have a sleeping problem. I use it. It makes me go to sleep. Uh, it relaxes me. I don't get violent. I live with a, a woman with three boys. I don't have it in the house. And I don't do it around the kids. But and, okay, and so you're you're saying that alcohol has these, you know, ma makes people more violent, oh, more, no doubt more about surly. It. Marijuana doesn't do that. No. When did you when did you start? Uh, I'm assuming you've had a drink or two too. When did you uh, do pot for the first time? When did you do alcohol? Uh, I'd say both around the age of 15. Both around the age of 15. Yeah. And uh, generally speaking, your crowd likes to smoke pot over alcohol, or do both, or what? It, it's it's pot. It, it's, it's pot. Not and are you? I mean, are you a you know a tax-paying, uh, hard-working citizen? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Okay. And um, I, you know, I'm getting sick of this. Uh, you know, you see the ads on television. You know, like uh, for sports on Budweiser. It's Michelob time. Right. And it has nothing to do with sports. And and what gets me is. When I go down to a, uh, we have a, a real nice restaurant right on the corner on Main Street, and when I go down there, I see the people who put pot, the people who get arrested for pot, they put these people in jail. I'm talking about the DA's office. Yeah. And they're down at Natilly's with the Bar Association. Drink. And they're, I'm, and they're drinking. No, I. They're drinking beer. They're drinking alcohol. And when these people are leaving, I, I watch them. They stumble up Main Street. And it's like, you know, what the heck is this? You know, they're putting people in jail. Okay. And Let me tell you what it is, because you asked the question, what the heck this is this? Yeah. It's called hypocrisy. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll agree. I agree with that. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate the call. Right. I'm going to move on. I do. Al, hello? Uh, yeah. Um, comment about uh, the smoking marijuana versus drinking. Mm -hmm. um, and the whole thing about driving a car and uh, doing other things. Uh, when you smoke marijuana, I refer to it as, as kind of a subjective high as opposed to drinking where it's, a, it's an objective high in so much as when you're drunk, you're drunk. No matter what you do, you can't get sober. I mean, no matter what they say, you know, black coffee, it doesn't matter. You can't get sober. But when you're, you're smoking marijuana, if you're in a stressful situation, the rush of adrenaline, all of a sudden, it ruins your high. I mean, you're, you're sober. It ruins your high. I mean, it, it, it happens. And uh, you I don't know if that's true or not. I mean, you it, think it so? Is. You it can overcome from, from, a marijuana high, but you cannot overcome a. Yeah, from my own experience and experience of, of uh, friends in observation, it's true. In fact, a lot of people say, "Well, that ruined my buzz because suddenly <laughs> they're straight." Well, that. <laughs> how old are you? I'm just trying um, to get a fix for all uh, these people who are smoking pot. Well, well, how old are you? Forty-three. You're forty-three. Do you and, have children? And, uh, yes, I don't smoke it around the house. I'm real responsible about it. Uh, I don't smoke it hardly at all because uh, anymore, just, I just sort of go to sleep. Are you afraid of getting caught? 
Mm, no, not really. W why not? Because, I mean, you get caught, you could, what, lose your job, but, all this stuff? But, no? I'm not... You know, I'm not smoking out in the street. Or don't you think, I, okay, so you think if you're not smoking on the street, generally speaking, the law, the laws against pot are not even enforced. You, you don't feel a threat. Right, right, but, but if they are, they can really ruin you. I mean, they're, 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 yeah. they're for a rather minor infraction, it can really mess up your life. Well, I'm sure that's true. You know, for, from a legal well, standpoint. Okay. I, thank you. Okay. Appreciate the call. I, I mean, I... Hypocrisy, that's the last word I want to leave you with. Here's your brain on, I don't know what. Here's your brain on al Here's your brain on pot. Here's your brain on alcohol. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the one. No public service announcements about that, is there? What? Hypocrisy. I'm sitting here talking to a friend of mine, actually one of the first people, might have been one of the first people I met here in Pittsburgh. Uh, you know her too, although maybe not as well as I do. Uh, Sally, you Where know, you're almost as, you're almost as infamous and you're, you're almost infamous enough in town that you can, Sally would identify you, you know, that single name identification, which is really cool to be able to say, you know, like share. Madonna. I think that's Sally. A, I think that's a what, do I, I? I don't know which camera. Do, do I? Oh no! Do you've I only just look been in the you? business for like you know really twenty know what years. What do you mean by camera? See, the you didn't like on. me. You didn't like me when you first. No, met I didn't me. like her. You did. I didn't you like you because welcoming. I thought you were you were a threat. I, yeah. I mean, of course, I'd only been here a year. You picked me up at the airport with a photographer. And um, we they flew me in, mm -hmm. and uh, and and. She was this blonde babe sitting in the back seat of the news car, and yeah, you were not very I remember, nice. To I this remember very acting new a bit kid. arrogant because yeah, I was were. shy. Yeah, it, she'd gotten to town all of like one month ahead of me, and we're acting like you. Don't, yeah, like you. Well, I don't know who you are, but uh, I'm going to be bigger than you. And no, you, that's true. Not it was true. true. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, okay, that's, anyway. don't listen to a word she says. She does have a tendency to exaggerate. That's true. For the one or two people who don't know who she is, it's Sally Wigan. And uh, she's the... Uh, what am I? I don't know. Well, you're the... You're Newsreader, actually. I guess that's that what we is call pretty it. Much, that's what the BBC much, calls, calls it. Do you think that's more uh, correct? I mean, given what you do 90% of the now. time. It might be now. It, it might be now, regrettably, um, because we, we spend so much time, you know, producing um, teases and and um, looking over the shows, and uh, except when I do the Steelers specials. Those are all mine. Then I'm a reporter again. Actually, I'm a sports reporter Okay, now. well, we don't <laughs> want to talk about that because people might not know that's what you wanted to be. She wanted to be a sports reporter, but it was in the days before they let girls do No, like no. That. No, it's because I was lazy. It was going to take a lot more work to break in, and I didn't want to work that hard. Oh, I don't. I think it would have been a rough row. They were not. And that's why I didn't Well, okay. Want well, to I mean, but that's understandable. Um, it, by the way, it's not Wiggins. Can we get that clear? It's, it's Wiggins. Does it, this is really odd. I mean, this is we're like talking to people it's on television. It's television, Sally. And here's what you do: you just look at me. I can't do believe I, I have so to tell her what I would have to. Problem. You just look at me. Don't worry about the camera. If somebody calls later, you can look into camera three and, okay. and, and right. develop eye contact with them. Okay. See, this is not a controlled situation. No, it's not, and it's making me really nervous. <laughs> I, know. Um, I hate being a guest. But you've been a guest before. You do a lot of like on morning radio. Well, but what's that's the difference? different. That's very different. Oh, because now they're looking at you. Yeah. And you're yeah, right. Yeah, and I don't know which <laughs> oh, camera. And I don't know where my good <laughs> side is. In this. There is no good side. Do you have a good side? Do you? Oh know yeah. That? Which yeah. is it? Which I forget because I don't know left from right. So oh, I don't do know which it. No, side no, wait. Here, show her on camera so you do no, both sides. No, I'm not going to do that. Oh no, that would be too we'll embarrassing. We'll vote. We'll vote on both sides. No. No. Fun at all. Okay, now wait a minute. You know, anchors aren't any fun. We've talked about that. They're not allowed to. They're just too paranoid. They can't have an opinion. You know, they're uh, just so uptight. Well, I was an anchor for like about six months. It didn't work. I couldn't do it. It's confining. This was in Wisconsin. Yeah. Well, they wouldn't let me do it here. In it Madison, was, It right? was confining. Yeah, it is. It because is. you're not allowed to really somewhat. show your stripes. Yeah. Yeah. Although it's interesting. I heard, oh, can I mention Peter Jennings? Can I mention Peter Jennings? Can we mention Peter Jennings? <laughs> I guess. Yeah. What about Peter? Jones? I heard him make a comment. Uh, oh gosh, last night he said, 
what um, now I can't even remember what it was. But that you, happens but it a showed, lot. But now. I, no, I know. It's, yeah, it was. It was. It was. But he shows sort of where Yeah, it was. Go. It was I, not objective. It was something about the uh, the Northern Ireland peace process, such as it is. That's what he said. Oh, and I went. So that's wow. Whoa. 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 By the way, if you want to ask her anything, feel free. Three 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 P C N C. Now, when, when you're looking there, the camera's just on you, it's on right? It's on I'm sorry. <laughs> Excuse us while we talk to you. This is on a two, camera two is on a two shot. Okay. Camera three will be your single shot. Okay. I have camera one here for when I look over there and they take me. See, down. I don't know what to do with my hands. I have something interesting to say. What do you mean? You went here. to anchor school. Here, let me show you. No, I know what they do. I don't know. Here, you go like this. You go like this, right? You hold them like that mm -hmm. on the on the desk on the whatever you call that. And are you ever allowed to like gesture? You I was have once a, a called. Ring on. I don't have a. I forgot my ring. I was once called into the general manager's office at uh, Channel Four when I worked there, mm -hmm. and I was told to stop waving hands. my hands. And I said, "Well, you have nice hands." Though. No, they're, that they're wasn't the point. I said, "That's what." But I said, Mine "That's like what ugly. I do." I said, "If you want another." babe on the set who sits like this there's a million of them i said as for me i wave my hands you taking a break on me they're taking a break sally we'll try to stop acting like you're not here in just a second 333 pcnc we're gonna find out if sally has a crush on a cartoon character <laughs> coming up We were just wondering if you could reasonably date a gynecologist. No, oh, I'm sorry, she's going to kill me. Uh, hi, welcome back, Sally Wigan. I met my ex-husband through my gynecologist. You did? Mm-hmm. How did that work? My my ex-husband was my gynecologist's best friend. And so you're in the gynecologist's office. And the gynecologist was a guy. And he said, uh, "Well, everything seems okay." No, because the gynecologist was my softball coach. Oh. <laughs> Don't ask. Jeez. Can we take a call or two? Just yes, to, absolutely. You sure. sure. Okay. Uh, Jeff, go ahead. It's Wigan here. How you doing, Sally? I'm uh, just curious as to where you're from. I admire your work, and I was just curious uh, how old you are. No. Do I have to tell that? No. No, I, I don't mind telling Jeff. Um, I am going to be. See, I try to get used to the really next tell? year. Do you really tell? Oh, I don't mind telling. I try to get used to the next year by by saying that I'm that age. So then I end up forgetting how old I really am. I'm 45 right now, but I'll, I'll Here, be over there. A I'm red sorry. light is on. Yeah, but I'll be 46 in several months. And um, Jeff, I don't are mind surprised? telling. That. Are you surprised at that age? Very. Yeah. How it's old? Good. Because I act like a child. Now, wait, <laughs> how old did you think she was? 38, 39. Cool. Oh, you're sweet. That's you're great. very sweet, well, Jeff. And I'm, it's funny, I was just talking to uh, uh, someone about where I'm from. It's, I think my parents would like me to say I'm from New England because they were from there, uh, from Maine and Massachusetts. But I was born in Michigan uh, when, my, when I was six. My parents moved to Alabama for my father's job. Eventually, I went back to Michigan to graduate school. I really, though, because I was raised in a New England home in the South, I feel really bizarre. So it's really odd. But I was, the fact is, if he's if Jeff's listening live in the to South you from the age of time. six to the time you went to graduate school, which is I was your in the South. Yeah. she was in Birmingham, Alabama. But both my parents would roll over in their graves if they knew I said I was from the South. Well, they moved to the South. They raised you in the South. I mean, you were in the but South. But you know, my parents. Yeah. They have their own ideas about well, where they okay. are. Okay, so Jeff, that's it. She's a Southern Belle. No, and absolutely not. Absolutely not. And she's older than you thought. Thank you. Although she's always happy to tell me that I'm older than she. Not is. that I don't like the South, but no. Okay. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. Jeff. You got good taste in women if you like her. Brad, hi. Brad. Brad. Yes. Hi. Oh, you, we were afraid you left, Brad. Oh, gosh. Thanks. That happens to me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Sally Lynn, I love both your talent, and I think that you are outstandingly um, professional, especially what you put on the, the the shows. Well, I have a question for Sally, and primarily with the weather. Uh, Mr. Donato has outstanding uh, programming and such like that, but in comparison to the other majors, why do we have to have his name as the weather? Uh, and what happens thereafter? 
when he uh, oh put her on the spot down. while you're at it you mean it's not Den you mean denardo weather um right i mean does he own the equipment and he takes it when he leaves no um I don't. actually do you know what i have to tell you you know that he started a large meteorolo meteorological service i and, know especially for the airports and such like yeah that. and right. and and he he had to i think when he went into television i'm not sure i'm telling the story right he had to sell it um but um Definitely. and i think because of that and he is Joe probably more than any other meteorologist in town is really truly a meteorologist right. he has a master's degree from the University of Chicago which is a formidable academic institution mm -hmm. and I think um, I, I just think that it was because he has been here so long and because he actually had his own me meteorological company that that's why it developed no I don't know what's gonna happen because I assume he's gonna be around as long as I am and that's gonna be for a long time does that satisfy you? Uh, well, yes, it, it satiates me, but I don't know if it satisfies. <laughs> well, well, do you know what? A little dissatisfaction is good in life. I know. We always can strive for more. Yes, exactly. Let me, suggest, let me just add this, because I don't have to go back and see Donardo today. Let me, you just be quiet. Let me just say, <laughs> let me say this. He, uh, and I don't know if it's still true, but for years he was, you know, when they do those things about who is the most recognizable television personality in town. Joe DiNardo was absolutely the gold standard in town. Everybody, that made him a very powerful man and one that Channel 4 would hang, you know, wanted to hang on to. So I would think if Joe DiNardo said, and you know what, instead of action news, I think we'll call it DiNardo news. <laughs> I'm, they would have, okay, Joe, anything you say, anything you say. And I mean, that's the reality. I mean, certain people in the business uh, develop uh, power and the ability to bargain. But you have to admit that the reason he's developed that standing in the community is because he's a real person. Absolutely. He's he is a real, a real person. person. I've talked to him, and I've touched him, and I know he's real. <laughs> well, I had a story about him a long time ago, right out of high school, that yes. uh, I feel real bad about. Maybe you guys know about this, but... Uh, a long time ago, he was receiving his brand new automobile, and I was working at this car dealership at this point in time. At this uh, particular instance, he was to receive the car, oh, two or three days before the actual release of the new models. Me being a young high school child, just driving for the first time, no, not really for the first time, but he was standing there in the lot, and I was odd, I would guess, and pulling into the lot, I did not realize that I had Yes, this is true. I ran and I hit into the pole. And I never heard Joe Denardo use language like that before, but nevertheless, I can understand why. I he didn't say an upper air, a loft. He said, he really was, he was, so you found out he was a real person. That's I did. Very <laughs> real and genuine. And I love him. He does great work. <laughs> I know that you're very, you're being very That's discreet. I know story. the car you're talking about. Yeah, it was me. Um, you do? That's a great story. I love it. Hey, thanks for the call. Very good. Bye-bye. Thank you. We're having fun with Sally Wigan. Time's going to fly. 333-PCNC. And we still don't know what cartoon character she has a crush on, but I am going to get to the bottom of it when Cullen on Table continues. my notes. Hi, welcome back. Lynn Cullen here with uh, an old friend. Uh, no, I'm Sally. not old. I didn't mean that. <laughs> I mean a friendship of some duration with this woman, Sally uh, Wigan, who's uh, obviously being very forthright because she's already told everybody how old she is. Okay, so you just, she told me before we went on the air that you saw this. I, I, I took three um, three young girls, one 15, they're all sisters, one 15, one 11, and one 4, and the 4-year-old, uh, who's named Stevie, has never been to a movie. She's, uh, so she, and she was You're getting just, off the subject. Well, I want to know. We went to see Mulan. We went to Mulan see Mulan. And? And the minute the guy <laughs> came on, I went, oh. I know, I did too. And I thought, this is I, so pathetic. I know, falling in love with I have it. a crush, and I'm going to go see it again. I know. I, I have to tell Not you. Not because I, I thought she was wonderful. Because you want to look I at him. I love the horse, too. Yeah, I the horse is the okay, horse. but the guy is really cool. Yeah. Mulan, the uh, Disney, uh, new, Disney animated feature, I took my son to it, too. And when they introduced the obvious male lead, Prince Charming, I did the same thing. I said, oh, wow. I mean, he's gorgeous. I know, but they don't kiss. Well, that's, 
he's a cartoon well, character. He's a cartoon characters kiss. I was well, thinking about Superman kiss something. Okay, but we were Superman thinking comic books. How pathetic is it? <laughs> <laughs> Two women in love with a cartoon character. I mean, that is pathetic. And do you know how many little girls are, too? I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, that's okay. He's cool. He is and, cool. And, He's and, cool. And the neat thing about that film is is uh, they finally really did it. The lead, the strongest character, the bravest and character, she saves the everybody most powerful else. character, the hero is a girl. But, of course, she's pretending to be a boy. But it's, how they, it's how, the only way she could do it. Right. 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 Um, I want to really quickly run down some things. Uh, we got. Do you want to take some calls? Yeah, we do. But how much sleep? I got no sleep last night. But I was thinking, as I was not sleeping last night. Well, you're interviewing Sally in the morning, and she doesn't sleep, so maybe you'll be on the same. Well, I mean, you get home at what? After midnight, maybe. Midnight. Okay, midnight. about midnight. And I happen to know that this woman like is going places at seven in the morning and eight in the morning. What the heck? I mean, and I so by the time I have to stop. By the time people first see you, like at uh, <coughs> five at five is the first show you do you've already been running all day and your day is actually just starting yeah I, you're I saying you have to I, stop. I, and 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 I've, I've I was away for two weeks on vacation and I, I realized that um, sleep really is one of the most important things you can do for longevity so that you feel good to boost your immune system and um, you're not doing so, it. well no, I, I I now try to get to sleep at 1230 I'm, I'm I'm exhausted enough that I can fall asleep at quarter of one and then I'm trying to sleep until 8:30, I really am. I get up. It's I'll wake up at 7:30. Um, the dogs will wake me up. One of them will, but the others are old and, and half dead, so they sleep until. Sally later. collects half dead dogs, and this is something that's generally not known about her. Half dead, strange dogs. On top of it, they're all about the size of small horses, and they're all dying. And the only dog she will take. Of them are. I know you're asked, wondering how many she has, but we'll just uh, tease you about that. But I'm on the edge of being eccentric. If you have a half-dead large dog <laughs> and you're trying to get rid of it, Sally uh, really is probably the person to call. <laughs> okay, listen. I think I'm kidding. Hey, there's another Sally on the line here. Okay. Sally, say hi to Sally. Good morning. Good, good morning. Hi. Good morning, Sally. Are you a Sarah? Uh, no. Okay. No, I have been a Sally ever since I was born. Yeah, I'm a Sarah. People don't realize that Sally is the is the nickname for Sarah in the dictionary. And do you know that means we are a, both a princess? Yes, and I have been accused of that. <laughs> what do you mean it's a princess? Repeatedly. Sarah means princess in Hebrew, right, Sally? Right. Yeah, you didn't know that, did you? I only took seven years of Hebrew. You'd expect it means me to know princess. that. Okay. Mm -hmm. We knew something you didn't, Lynn. Oh, I love that, Sally. Good so, uh, I uh, uh, so, And I have to say, Lynn, I enjoy Sally so much when she's on your girlfriend shows. Me too, but she won't do it anymore because I embarrass her. No. Oh, I hope she will. No, I, I, I'll do it again. She did embarrass me once. She called me, what did she call me, an apologist? for? I don't uh, know. You, it wasn't embarrassing. She got mad at me. I, I, wanted, I got she, mad. she was furious with me. Okay, but I... Well, Sally, I have to say that you are my favorite <laughs> news person in Pittsburgh. Well, aren't you, And I, I feel so guilty for holding your feet to the fire for something that the station does. Oh, no. Oh, that's I, okay because, I, I, you know, I figured I was going to get some of that today. Well, I, I think that it's something that as professional a person as you are, that you probably uh, are as turned off by it as I am but are not in a position to say so. But I really object to those graphics that they run throughout the news that obscure the bottom 20% of the screen and sometimes take away from what is being shown that you, you know, it's really something that's down near the bottom. But even worse than that is the fact that at least once a program there is a terribly misspelled comment on that graphic. Where's Miss Spelling? Where's Miss Spelling when we need Why it. they do it and two, why they don't at least edit whoever is doing the printing of those graphics. I, I, I will have to tell you, Sally, that <clears throat> you'll find misspelling, though, occurs in, in some of the loftiest uh, uh, of, of media institutions like the New York Times. Misspellings found it everywhere. Um, in, 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 Every night? Well, <laughs> in, in the crunch of what's going on, there are actually people do look over things. But um, I, I will have to tell you, I've gone over copy when I'm in a hurry or when something happens at the last minute or there's, there's just bedlam going on. And um, See, I'll, look over a... something. <laughs> I'll look over something she's... and I'll swear An that apologist. it's correct. And then and when I see it on the air or when I see it in the prompter, I go, 
and it's something that I've looked okay. over. I, I think that's one of the things. As far as the graphics are concerned, Sally, yeah. there have been other people who have complained to us. I, I, I know we've gotten complaints about the graphics, but part of it is, it's, if, you'll, if you'll notice, mm. that is the way all of television is going. The networks have changed their graphics. They're flashier. They're bigger. They're what? What do There's you graphics right here, right under you, right? right? They're trying to, what they're doing is they're trying to catch your eye because with, it's, it, and it's interesting, I was watching one of the national talk shows and everything the guest was saying was, see I don't watch much television and so when I was off for this two weeks I was watching TV and I was just, I, I, I was like amazed. Everything the guest was saying they were doing graphics underneath like people can't listen themselves. But I think people are assuming or, or producers are assuming that you're coming in and walking in and out of rooms, you're changing with your remote. That's the key. You're changing with your remote all the time. So they have to catch your eye quickly and the only way to do it is big. That's what I'm. I, I, that's what I'm assuming because Sally, it's happening everywhere. Yeah. Sally, well, I do know that the misspellings have turned me off so badly that at times I've gone away to another station for oh. one or two days. But I can't until they misspell you. Something. Oh, don't do that. But, well, I, I always end up coming back and gritting my teeth and the uh, whole bit that I really enjoy you and your personality shows through. And please go back to the girlfriend show once in a while. I, well, I definitely will. I did. I, I did know. Well, you know what I'll do? I'll have a former girlfriend show and then <laughs> Sally can come on. And all the girlfriends <laughs> I've enraged on the girlfriend show can come on. The enraged well, actually, former girlfriends. Yeah, actually, I've enraged every single one of them. It's not easy being well, my girlfriend. Well, we're girlfriend. still your friends. Isn't it? They're wonderful. Long-suffering friends of Lynn Cullen show. That's what we'll do. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back. Uh, I'm having too much fun today. I get paid for this. This is amazing. Uh, Sally Wigan, a uh, friend. I don't want to say old friend anymore. She makes things so personal, <laughs> so thin-skinned. Uh, she's more educated than I. She's Phi Beta Kappa. What? Just a second. Phi Beta Kappa, although, is the University of Alabama, so that doesn't really count. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, the only other, I know one other Actually, Phi Beta. you know, I've used that No, line. I know. The only other Phi Beta Kappa I know from the University of Alabama is uh, the great quarterback, Bart Starr of the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> he was Phi Beta he Kappa. He was Phi Beta Kappa at, at uh, Alabama. But Sally has a master's degree in Oriental stu Asian Studies. Asian oh, I'm sorry, you're the one. Studies. I think that's why I did that. She says you don't call people Orientals or it's not Oriental. That's ridiculous. Asian Studies from the University of Michigan, which is a unlike the University of Alabama, is a fine institution of higher education, and she's got a master's. Do you know how many people from the University of Alabama you've just alienated out there? But you know what? I, you're used to that's doing my that, job. aren't you? That I is know. your job. That is my job. Let's go back to the phones. Fran, go ahead. You're talking to Sally Wigan. Fran. No, you're not. Fran? Fran. Did we lose Fran? That's okay. There's oh, poo. Fran was from Alabama, and she's left. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have to credit my producer in my ear for that. Is that what he said? Oh, yes, what... No, and then he's now correcting me and cre uh, cre uh, crediting, excuse me, the TD. You're crediting a touchdown? Oh, a technical director. Technical director. Did TD. you know that was a T TD? Is? Oh, you know television. Stop acting I like I don't know you what don't. a TD no. is. Yes, you do. Uh, Bob, hi. Good Bob. morning. Phi Beta Kappa. Eh, I'm Ka afraid so. Cowabunga. Cowabunga. <laughs> Wait, who said cowabunga? Isn't that the S Simpsons? Who said, no, oh no, no, that's a bit. Howdy Doody. Who? Howdy, Howdy Doody, Doody did not Buffalo say Cowabunga. Who said listen. Cowabunga? Bart Simpson. No. But no, yes. No, no, go way back to Howdy Doody, Buffalo Bob. He it's Howdy Cowabunga. Doody time. Exactly. The show ain't worth the dime. <laughs> and as for Uncle Bob, well, he's no good at the job. I can't remember. We used to make fun of him. Well, Bob, I'm sure you have something to say. <laughs> Please. Listen, you know, over the past uh, couple of months, I've been reading in the newspaper that uh, Dan Rather, Tom Brokaw, and um, uh, the fellow on ABC. Peter Jennings. Peter Jennings have all signed ridiculous contracts, like seven, eight million dollars a year. I think that's a lot of money for reading. What do you think? Uh, I know you're in the business, and I know that if I were you, I'd grab as much as I could. Too. Well, actually, do you know what? They really do a lot more than read. That they, do. they do. They're the managing editors. They are, um, and actually, in a way, you could say that we sort of are too because you're the last person who speaks it and I once said oh something got through and and uh, one of my bosses said 
you're the last person to touch that copy. You don't like it. Something's wrong. You have the responsibility to change it. So there is that responsibility. Also, um, many people do watch a show because of the anchor, and, and the networks feel that way. And uh, in order to keep their anchors in place, um, I could, they yes, it's a huge amount of money. Sports figures make a huge amount of money. Is uh, Mark McGuire worth what he's going to get if he goes to you know 61? If he beats Roger Maris's record, uh, who's to say? I, I really can't. I mean, it, they get what the market can bear. But I compare. But I read an interesting article in Newsweek. Um, it was a commentary about how there are now so many sources of information that it has diluted the power of the media. So why are these people making? Making this money, it may be uh, it may be the last time we see this happen because once these guys are gone, the ones who come afterwards probably aren't going to make as much. Although here here I read that Stone Phillips is now going to making five million and Katie Cork, what did they give her? Seven million Seven and Jane million? Pauley five and a half million and I didn't even get a raise last year. <laughs> yeah, it's you know what. Uh, a huge amount of money is, is is involved in what they do, and and actually, network news now is the way that stations make money. You, okay. I mean, you're not saying anything. You have opinions on this. Yeah, I think it's obscene, don't you, Bob? Yeah, I sure do. Thanks a lot, Lee. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah, I, I, Bob, I think <laughs> well, it's obscene. Yeah, I mean, sure. I mean, and you know, will I ever make anything like that? Of course not. I don't. I mean, you know, it's 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 it, it is. But I mean, I'm not gonna say. Okay. Well. We'll be back in just a moment with, an uh, with another overpaid, unopinionated anchor, <laughs> Sally Wicked. Okay, just a few minutes left. It's going much too fast because we're having much too much fun. Uh, someone called in and said Snoopy and Peanuts says Cowabunga, Cowabunga. too. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. And uh, back to another Bob. Bob, hi. You're talking to Sally Wicked. Hi, Lynn. How are you today? Fine. Good. I have a good fact. I can tell a cute story about you and Sally in my ex-restaurant in Sharpsburg that my waitress didn't recognize you guys and she let you sit for 10 minutes. I almost had a fit. And the restaurant's gone now. You used to bring so many people in my restaurant. I love you for that, Lynn. Oh, thank you. It was wonderful, that restaurant. I remember that, right? It's fabulous food. Well, I thank you. Thank you, Bill. I appreciate that. So uh, we weren't recognized in Sharpsburg? Pardon? We weren't recognized in Sharpsburg. That, huh? Is that why you came? Oh, okay. That's why I stopped coming, Bob. I, I thought it was the baby hot. I thought it was the hot dogs for for your son. I thought. I <laughs> oh, I do remember this. That was yes, a wonderful yes, restaurant. Yes. Yeah. So you have a question? Yes, Bobby? I, yes, I do. This is for Sally. Okay, and Sally, I'm just curious. There's so many promos about the next half an hour between the five and six thirty mail, and the, the, it's like there's the more promos there is news. It's, do you find that to be true also? I find that it has changed. Yes, <laughs> you're gonna. I, I, you're, you're gonna. I'm gonna be incredible. These shows are always kind of difficult for you know for on-air people. Um, I, I found that it it's changed, and once again, I come back to remotes. I come back to the 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 numerous, almost mind-boggling number of choices you have for visual entertainment, and. Um, they have to hold you and they feel that the only way to hold you is to promote what's coming up and they have to hold you say past a quarter hour because that's when if they can hold you say you're watching from 11 to 11 15 I'm looking at a clock you know so I can get a sense of it that's why I was looking up like that Bob but um, if they can hold you past into that second quarter hour they also get your numbers if you have a meter on that second quarter hour so that's why you're gonna see all the television stations and I was in Washington DC I saw the same thing oh yeah everybody does yeah it. everyone's doing it and it's because of remotes it's so easy to sit there and I, I remember I was bored I was sitting there and I have I don't watch TV an awful lot because I don't have time but I, I was getting a chance to just sit around and relax and I was pop 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 and I was just flipping through those channels and I'm thinking well this is why they do it they're trying to think of anything they can to keep you from touching that remote they want to be able to count your head I hate to say this but I think Channel 11 has a perfect idea 11 or 11 and then go to a new show at that time you know they could put in a sitcom for a half an hour but then they haven't held you for 15 <laughs> pardon 11 at a well, I don't know. You notice she's gotten all of a sudden stonily silent. Because I'm, so I'm actually I'm not sure what he's talking about since I she's don't on watch. The air at since I don't watch. They, they have this. No, that's why I'm that's you know, saying I promotional. Don't. Bob. Yes. Bye. Bye. You bye, Bob. Nice Thanks. Day. Bye, bye. Thanks for calling. Bye, bye. <clears throat> Gee, I don't know. I'm sorry. Callers, are, Jeff, can you do it in two seconds? Nah. 
Another yeah, Jeff? No he, no, he went, and I don't blame him because we don't have any time. This was fun. You got to do it this again, fun. or you got to come back and do my uh, the girlfriend show on on the radio. Sure. Okay. Sure. As long as you. She has a dog. I have made little notes. You have a dog that speaks German. Yes, he speaks so German. German. She only Wigan would have a German Shepherd. That I learned five words. What do you know? Sitz, sitz, bleib, Platz. <laughs> Platz. Here, here, here means is here. here. Well, I mean, sitz must mean sit. What does Zitz Platz means, mean? Platz means lie down. Giblau, giblau means speak. Giblau. Giblau. He doesn't do Gib that real well. He just jumps at me when I say that. <laughs> Sally Wigan, up close and personal and. There you have it. Thank, Thank you. you. I That's appreciate fun. it. It was this fun. Was fun. This I was know fun. it's fun. It's a fun show. Uh, uh, sh I'll be back in just a minute to say uh, what's coming up uh, to tease you, to promote things. <laughs> <laughs> Television. Help it. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to have Sally Wigan and then the next day and the next day because that was fun and it wasn't any work for me. Actually, we're going to talk about uh, protecting your financial interests before you marry. <laughs> Whatever happened to love and trust and commitment? Gee whiz. I'm on the radio on 1360 AM from noon to 3. You can join me over there. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay? Have a good day. Bye-bye.